Hi everyone, it's Chenzo from Reality Art Pod here to talk about part one of the two part season premiere of Big Brother 26. We are so back. Oh yeah. Before I dive in, if you want to watch the episodes and the live feeds which start tomorrow, you can use my link to get started with Paramount Plus for free and follow the instructions to get a free sticker from me as well. But let's dive into it. This time we're starting right with what's Julie wearing? Julie is mothering, giving a house tour in an elegant navy blue flowing jumpsuit, giving mother of the bride, but also single and flirty. She's even wearing the house decorations as earrings. This outfit from Julie is god tier. She has a profound conversation with a robot. Hello, Julie. Hello. And sidesteps across the stage so we can see that she's wearing a jumpsuit and not a dress. Julie reminds us that the prize will once again be $750,000 and then grapevine kickball change across the stage. Look at my jumpsuit, not a dress. We meet the house guest starting with Rubina who has impressive roller skating skills, shows her rage rooming, raving, and gives the males a warning. Consequences of mansplaining in the house. Eviction! Cam shows off his football skills, telling us he had an injury leading to him being a physical therapist and shares of him losing his mom at a young age. Mackenzie pops bottles with her friends, plays volleyball, and gives the males a warning as well. Well, men know not to mess with me. Joseph exerts himself running and shows us the awesome looking video store that he works at. He's a huge fan and poker player. Angela is donning her business suit and declares herself a cool mom. Oh yeah. And gets emotional, saying this is going to be the time of her life. Kimo jams out on his ukulele and shares his art. He says he felt supported by his brother and watched Big Brother with him. He lost his brother to cancer, which gives him motivation to win the game. Chelsea tells us she's 5'2 and was a college basketball player. She's also a religious mentor and public speaker, and she's here to play. I will probably be asking Jesus for forgiveness after the show. Last is Tucker, who sells protein bars and drinks from the river raw. He had a hard time in his childhood with his dad coming out as gay and makes a lot of Jim Carrey gesticulations, as I'm sure we'll come to expect from him. Julie greets the house guests, telling Tucker, Angela, Kimo, and Chelsea to enter first. Nobody wants to enter first, but of course, Tucker fulfills on his dream of being the first one in and beating the quote unquote stigma of the first one in curse. Angela is emotionally jazzing in the house, and rightfully so. The other four join them to big hugs, greetings, and first impression judgments. Mackenzie says this group of guys aren't tall enough to date her. Joseph thinks people will judge him as villainous based on his mustache. And Cam is suspicious of Tucker, but is going to keep him close for now. Julie tells us they're going to make a game-changing decision and puts them into Hollywood squares. The twist is the eight of them are going to vote to either bring a new house guest into the game or deny them the opportunity to join. At this time, we meet our 17th house guest, Ainsley, who's dressed like Ashley O from Black Mirror in an iridescent top and blue hair. She's 24, single, and works at a surf shop in San Diego. Ainsley runs through her monologue all in one take and really comes off as an actress. They cast their votes and personally I think I'd vote no. While I'd love to get drinks with her, Ainsley comes across as super sketchy. In the end, Ainsley only gets four votes from Angela, Rubina, Mackenzie, and Joseph, meaning she didn't get enough votes to join the house. And Ainsley is devastated. But Ainsley tells them she isn't really going anywhere and she morphs into a freaking robot. And she tells us that Ainsley really stands for artificial intelligence, blah 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 blah. She reveals that her monologue was all just a riddle and a test. She was saying that if they voted to keep her, she'd help them. So the players who voted yes will compete to receive a secret power, and the players who voted against her will compete to avoid a disadvantage. The players compete individually in their respective challenges, starting with the upgrade competition for the advantage, where they'll be strapped in a spinning chair and have to memorize a color sequence, then dizzily press buttons to repeat the sequence. The person that gets the most right quickest will win. Angela goes first. I honestly think the sequence was impossible to remember, and Angela does terribly, stumbling and falling on the first correct button and then getting the second color wrong. Joseph is next and he starts off on the right track but then has an oh shit moment where he realizes there's a lot of colors so he ends up getting four right answers. Rubina sits in silence, doesn't say a peep and gets four right. Mackenzie is going full Megan robot mode using her eyes to scan every pixel of the room and ends up getting four right in the fastest time so she's gonna win the advantage whatever the hell that is. The downgrade disadvantage challenge is putting their head into fear boxes full of creepy critters to unscramble unnerving words, find the words on the wall, hang them on the other wall, and then plug in their plug for some reason. Tucker is first and bodies this challenge showing he's going to be really good at BB challenges. Kimo goes next and he does well too. Cam moves like lightning and then Chelsea's up. She starts off saying she's scared of snakes and maybe seeing the snake throws her off because she's taking extra time and forgets to plug in her plug which they zoom in on so obviously Chelsea's going to lose this and be punished in the game but they won't find out the results of these challenges until the other group joins them and the episode ends with the house guest cheersing some kind of TikTok drink. Okay zoomers. No cap. Back in my day we drank champagne. I saw a lot of criticism on Twitter of this only being an hour-long episode, but I found it to be short and sweet. While 
I like the idea of a live move-in. They're so long and monotonous, and it was nice to see everyone move in with diaries of their reactions to meeting each other. I also don't mind that they split the house guests in two, because the alternative would be a two-part premiere where someone's eliminated the second night, which I really hate. I would have liked to have first night feeds, but years of being a fan of the show have made me accustomed to disappointment. With this being a pre-taped show, I really noticed that Cam pointed out that he's sus of Tucker. That may be a hint at some potential house happenings later in the week. We met Ainsley, who's supposed to be AI, but is really an actress reading a script that was surely written by a human writer, especially after the writer's strike. So really, what about Ainsley will actually be AI? This reminds me of the AI bot on The Circle that was definitely not really AI and Lana from Too Hot to Handle. It's basically just a way for the producers to do whatever they want, but at least we don't have to suffer through themed weeks or fests, and it can just be the twists being twists all summer long. Finally, while I find these competitions kind of monotonous, they were a lot more equitable than last season, where one of the comps was a sit-up competition, so I'm left off feeling super hopeful for this season and excited for tomorrow's continuation, but that's all I have to say about this episode. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'll be back tomorrow with part two of the premiere. I'll see you then. Bye!